Hi, I'm Stephen with Alberta Urban Garden.ca. Welcome to my indoor garden. On today's episode, we're going to start the rock dust trial. The aim of this rock dust trial is to prove two hypotheses. The first, that it will not impact germination rate, because that should predominantly be the seeds. And the second, that it actually has a positive impact as the manufacturers of rock dust, either Gaia Green or, or Azimite, claim. So, the, the, the industry claims, and, and hopefully we'll be able to test a little bit of this, that rock dust has a couple of beneficial properties to your soil. So first off, it claims that most of the soil that we currently use today does not have enough trace minerals in it. Those are depleted and washed out as we began uh, chemical agriculture. So the idea then is, you put those trace minerals back into the soil. Once you've put them back into the soil, the, the plant can use them. One of the side spin-offs that they claim is that these trace minerals and this rock dust also help with the uh, population's beneficial microbes and animals. So things like worms can get in there and use it. The bacteria that the worms put into the soil, such as in worm castings, that's super beneficial to your plants, they get a benefit from having those trace minerals. Around. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two trials. We're going to do one, which is the seed starting trial for which I'm going to use some duplicate sets of peppers and some duplicate sets of, of tomatoes to try one with rock dust and one without. Before we get too far into that, I thought I would uh, have a drink with you. This is my home brew beer. It is very delicious. And I'd like to welcome all of my new friends. Thank you very much, Ray, for giving a shout out. I've had such a great time since you posted that video. And I'd like to just thank you one more time. I've met so many great new people and had so many great discussions this week. I just figured I'd say thanks. So, cheers. So further to the rock dust trial, you can join us. I would really appreciate if you would join us in this. There's more information on our Google Plus page for the garden field trials. If you're also interested, currently One Yard Revolution is doing a biochar field trial that is going to start here next week. So the, th the three main components and everything is written out well in a document on our our Google Plus page but the three main components are, are quite simple. We've got coconut core which you can see here. This is Gaia green rock dust with the trace minerals. Some worm castings which will inoculate the mixture, the soil mixture with beneficial bacteria that if the rock dust in fact does have uh, a benefit on the rock dust should help them get better than the the control group some peat based potting soil and so what we're going to do is we're going to mix them in roughly equivalent um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix them in roughly equivalent volumes so we're going to use one kilogram of a hydrated coconut core, one kilogram of worm castings, and one kilogram of the potting mix. And we're going to add half of a kilogram of the rock dust to that mixture. We're going to do two controls, or two sets. One of them will be a control, which we will not add the rock dust to, and the other one we will add the rock dust to. To select the seeds, we're going to start them all in peat pots. I find I get the best germination right down here in my peat pots, so I'm going to start them in the peat pots, and what we're going to do is we're going to select three very similar sized seeds of color and size. That'll mean that they're probably the closest. We're going to plunk them all in there, we're going to do two of them. When they come up, what we're going to do is the first one that sprouts true leaves, the other two get clipped and one is remaining. If two sprout true leaves at the same time, then what you want to do is you want to select the tallest. So we're going to hop into it here and uh, mix this, this uh, mix up. I'm going to show you the red solo cups and how I use them in my garden. A special note, I would like to thank my uncle. If you notice I just turned purple or something. He's borrowed me an LED grow light so that our growing conditions for this trial, we're going to start them under CFL bulbs and then if required we'll move them underneath this LED light. If you'd like more information on the rock dust trial or the biochar trial, 
please feel free to join our Google Plus page. I'll put it down in the description. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Red Solo cups. These hold 16 ounces and roughly to about the top of this ridge is about 12 ounces. As the soil settles, we'll top it back off and leave it at the 12 ounce level until it uh, it needs to be up potted. So with any Solo cup, you can reuse this a couple of times. I just poke a couple of quick holes in the bottom to allow drainage. And that's it. Then what I do is I write on them with just black felt pen and then I scratch it out when, as, I, uh, as I plant new things in there. What we're going to do with the peppers is when they get either 30 centimeters tall or 6 inches, we're going to do my pruning or Praxis's pruning on them. The tomatoes, what we're going to do is we're going to wait another week until we're at the 15th of, of uh, February and we're going to plant some tomato varieties. With these Jiffy peat pots, it is really absolutely easy to pot them. You know they're ready when you see the white roots coming out. So all you do is you plop them down and you can fill them up. With these Jiffy peat pots, sometimes it's recommended to take this mesh off. What I do is I use boiling hot water to expand them and that seems to weaken the mesh. Not enough that it falls apart, but just enough that the plant isn't going to get choked. So it's important to note the soil mixture that we made up left it for 48 hours just to settle in. When watering, we're going to do our best to keep the plants getting equal amounts of water, especially in the pears. We're going to set them up originally under the light ballasts using the CFL grow lights. We're going to randomly remove them and shake them up at least once a week. It's time to thin them out. So, these two sprouted true leaves at the same time. This one in the back is slightly larger, so we get rid of the one. Same with these, larger one stays. Again, smaller one's gone. And we're just going to finish this up. I've chosen to keep it to two or three sets of pairs so that we can maximize the types of plants we're, that are included in this trial. So from left to right we've got the Santa Fe Grand, Tequila Sunrise, and Agi Omnicolor. So it's now time to set them up, let them settle in, and let the competition start. So it's now time to put them underneath the grow lights. We want to make sure, especially with CFL bulbs, that they're roughly equidistant to each of the plants and they're as close as possible. Most CFL bulbs run cool, so it shouldn't be a problem to get them close. If you don't leave them close, CFL bulbs lose a lot of their power exponentially with the distance that they, that they are away from the plants. Things like LED and high pressure sodium don't. You can actually keep them fairly far from the plants. So we're going to keep them under the CFL bulbs for as long as possible and then possibly, if needed, upgrade them to sitting underneath the LED light that my uncle was so kind enough to borrow me. In the summer, we're going to take other unrelated plants and try rock dust for one of the, the third benefits. Not only for the size of plant, health of plant, and health of the micro uh, organisms in the soil, but for improved taste. John Collar, one of the most recognized gardeners on YouTube, claims that it makes the fruit sweeter. So for that, what we're going to do is we are going to bring in some new plants that are sweet bell peppers and sweet tomatoes. Because if it makes it sweeter, it's probably best to not have the superheat of a hot pepper and keep it to the sweet components to see if in fact it does make an impact on that. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and if you haven't already, please give this a video a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much.